What's up everyone, welcome to Akuma's Arsenal, and today we'll be talking about the podcast S-Town. I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can uh, listen to the podcast yourself. If you haven't, please stop watching the video, go listen to the uh, podcast, and then come back to the video once um, you finished the podcast. So, the story, um, I'll just summarize it very quickly for, you, for those of you that maybe have watched it a while back in the past. It follows the um, the story of an, a, a man in Alabama who has a multiple of identities with him. He is um, gay, he's from the country in Alabama, he's a horologist, um, his name is John B. McLemore, or something very similar to that, um, and he is very, very, very negative. Um, I'm, you guys have know how the, uh, how the series ends, so I'm not going to go into depth about that, but I want to talk about more about, um, that sort of side of horology, and it's a side that, uh, people on our end who are more into watches never really get to see, and I just want to discuss more about it and just kind of relay my thoughts. Us people in the YouTube watch world, we, we don't really, for some reason, like, we don't really get into um, timekeeping devices that that push before the 50s, and even the 50s is kind of rare because um, I in the UGWC on YouTube channels, I it's rare that I find a wristwatch. First of all, vintage wristwatches. Then second of all, a vintage wristwatch before 19, the 1950s. It's super duper duper rare, um, and I think that we're missing a lot um, by not diving deeper into the older generations of horology because you have to take a look at, you know, where are we today, you know, all these crazy wristwatches that we have, the Seiko SKX, the Quartz, we have XYZ, 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 we have, this, we have the modern ceramic submariner, like, where do all this stuff, where does all this, all this stuff come from? And I think it's super duper important to take a look at uh, those older forms of horology. Uh, John B. McElmore, his expertise was very, very old antique clocks. And if you guys are familiar with the way he used to make those clocks, um, he used to, how do I say it? He used to restore clocks, vintage clocks, but not vintage, I mean, ain't like from old, 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 old clocks that had no manuals, that had nothing, anything like that. He had to restore them all by himself and using his knowledge. And um, I think some type of thing called like ghost prints, I believe. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, but what what his kind of diving into horology kind of taught me was that horology is more than just having a watch collection. Horology is straight up, it's in the name, the study of time. And that is the thing that I feel like us in the watch world aren't doing enough. Studying time itself. All the ancient timekeeping methods, um, time in our own lives, time on our wristwatches, using, because like, for example, um, all the little things on, on a wristwatch, a chronograph, a tachymeter, do we even use that stuff in our daily life? Like, we look and think, oh, it's, it's cool, this is cool, you know, that's what I thought, and then every time I, I, I start to dive a little bit deeper and learn about, like, all the different functions of a wristwatch, it starts to pull me in more, and diving deeper into the passion, I'm, I'm getting more of a sense of fulfillment from it. It's really kind of interesting because, like, yeah, I have the YouTube channel, but I mean, if if for some reason I couldn't upload videos anymore and it would stop, I would continue learning. Um, I would continue on uh, learning about horology. And uh, one thing that I want to be in my life is to be be able to consider myself and have the knowledge level to be called a horologist. Um, because, like, for example, right? I, I was. Today I was supposed to actually film a video uh, reviewing this Tissot that my friend lent me. However, I can't find any information on it, right? So I, I, I just did a deep dive into the history of Tissot and I was like, all right, well, I'll just make a history of Tissot video, but I couldn't find my notes, so I had to kind of improvise and that's what this is. But even diving into Tissot, there's so much a wealth of knowledge there and I, I, can, I suspect that if I dived deep into like these particular topics like let's say I dived deep into like 1890s Tissot or something um, the amount of fulfillment I would get from that would be off the charts because there's something so beautiful about looking at the because you know I'm a history nerd but really 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 taking a look at the history of different watch brands and different watch companies um, talking more about like how the mechanisms actually work um, like I like <laughs> 
I want to really expand my, uh, my, not my watch knowledge per se, my horological knowledge. And that, and I think at the surface level of that is wristwatches. Um, you guys might know this, but, you know, I, when I, when I have a wristwatch, like, I, I, I guess I like the aesthetics, you know what I mean? But I was actually talking with, um, Lee from my Scott's Watches. You guys should definitely check out his channel. Um, go to the, some of the older live streams. I'll have, uh, it'll have his link in there. He was telling me that he likes the watches for the aesthetic purposes, right? Um, and then I was saying that I like them, uh, more about what, kind of what they represent. Now, we both obviously appreciate watches for the other reason too, but I found that really interesting when I said that, right? I was like, oh, well, that's, that's why I like watches. Oh, so... What I want to work on more with the YouTube channel is, is developing like a narrative and, and that's why a lot of these videos haven't really had my face in them because I don't you don't need to see my face like I want you to, to, to hear what I'm saying do you know what I mean like like I want you guys to kind of go on this journey with me um, one thing I've noticed about as I continue to dive deeper into horology is I start to pay attention more to my own personal life and starting to kind of not even just appreciate but learning more how to act in time because what even for example this to sew that i'm handling right in front of me right i'll put some b-roll up a bit the amount of this no 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 lee likes the craftsmanship not the aesthetic sorry i apologize uh, lee my bad home, home dog he likes the the craftsmanship of the wristwatch but even holding this wristwatch right here i mean insane amount of craftsmanship in this one single wristwatch the dial has like a interesting look to it and that the case is old school it's manual wine but i'm not going to go into uh, detail because that's for the review um that's one thing i probably should do more dives into is like understanding the craftsmanship of watches um i have a pretty good knowledge of how engineering works and especially mechanical engineering uh, my uncle is a uh, designer, right? So he's always in this this program called SolidWorks, moving different things, you know, taking things out, carving things, and making like you know three dimensional objects. I actually subscribe to this other guy on YouTube. Um, all he talks, to, all he just posts videos of like the uh, like models of how these crazy mechanisms and watches work, and I, that's something I want to learn more about. Um, some other things I want to learn more about is, I, I always say movements, but. I don't really care. I don't know why. I just I don't care about movements that much. I mean, I'm gonna learn the basics. No, I'm learning the basics, not gonna. Um, but I don't care what kind of movement is in the Rolex Daytona, like in the 1970s Rolex. I don't care about that stuff. I care more about sort of like what was pushing the advancements. Like why why did they use this type of valve instead of this valve? Or why did they use this type of escapement versus this other escapement? And why does it have this many jewels instead of this many jewels? Um, you know, honestly, I don't even know what jewels are. <laughs> See, like, I mean, I have a YouTube channel with 100 videos up, and I still gotta, I have to brush up on the basics, honestly. Definitely, I definitely do. You know, I, I'm probably gonna go edit back and change some stuff, because I said that if you haven't watched S-Town, then <laughs> don't listen to it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. If, if, do you guys have any, if you guys have any recommendations for me to take a look into, books, resources, um, anything like that, I would love to, love to, love to, love to, to, to look into it. Um, that Seiko video I did, I had so much fun making that. It was it was the perfect way to kind of like kind of connect, you know, my watch passion with my other passions, like history. I love learning about history. It was, it was fun to be able to connect it to, and I want to continue to be able to do that. Um, with the so, for example, they were started in like I believe the early, I mean early 18th, no mid 18th, 19th century. Um, during World War II, they went through this whole little fiasco, and I, I was like thinking like, oh, because obviously Switzerland wasn't really able to export watches. I mean, the only person they could really export watches to was Nazi Germany, and probably I mean it's it's the war period, so people aren't going to be buying, you know, watches. They have to buy food. So I was going to talk about that, and watch why the company kind of fell off, and just there's so much to kind of learn about and I, i'm just I'm, I'm really on the baby steps like uh, i was telling lee like um, about youtube and i was talking about like spark like, his channel's like a spark my channel's like a small fire uh, and then you have like um like a bonfire that would be like um like a tenth us to channel with ten thousand subscribers like i don't know minute watch size maybe and then there's like a force fire, which I would consider like TGB's channel, right? But I want to kind of interpret that more from my uh, watch knowledge. Now, I'm not going to know everything, obviously. God, I'm, I'm an idiot. Because <laughs> it's not possible to know everything. <laughs> but I'm going to I wanna learn this stuff because it's, it's interesting to me. 
and at the same time i can give the information to other people so it's it's like it's it's amazing other people get to learn i get to learn i get to make money uh from the ads you know it's a win-win for everyone and um that's the one of the, that's the direction I'm, I'm heading my channel i'll keep on doing reviews but you know it's kind of as a watch youtuber i maybe maybe some of you guys uh, get this too like maybe it's kibbles listening or uh maybe lee or maybe tgv maybe i don't know any of you have eric yoon aaron any of you guys have a um, have a youtube channel right you know, you gotta rely on product, right? You have to have a watch, you have to review it, and then, boom, that, that watch kind of doesn't have any more uh, video usage, but what I'm thinking is, um, if I just do deep dives into how obelisks work, uh, the history of Tissot, the history of Rolex, da 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 um, it's a great way to kind of create good content for the channel that's interesting, enjoyable, great learning experience, and at the same time, I don't have to rely on like a physical um, wristwatch, because uh, you know, number one, I don't people, I don't want people to send me like a billion wristwatches, and second, it's like people aren't sending me a billion wristwatches. <laughs> so that is the direction I want to head my channel. I would love to hear your thoughts, guys. Um, I'm expecting this one to just be more for like the you know the the OG subs. Love to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, once again, if you have any uh, sources, books, anything you want, if you want to freaking type the history of like ancient Egyptian timekeeping, shoot, do that in the comments. Like I, I want in my in the comments for this video to just I want to be I want I need I need to start because like, I'm not exactly for sure where to go to start. I'm gonna keep on doing dives into um, different companies, but I want to get a good knowledge, and you guys definitely know more than me. <laughs> Well, that's the end of this 13 minute long video. Thank you very, very much for watching and Akuma.